This is The Valley on ESPN. Tonight, we greet you from Evansville, Indiana, as the Purple Aces host the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Alongside one of the all-time best in the NBC, Marcus Wilson, I'm Kyle Peach, welcoming you inside the Ford Center in Evansville, where tonight, again, SIU and Evansville, this is a historic rivalry through the years, renewed again here tonight. Yeah, it's always a tough game. Southern is known for their toughness. Evansville, it's always great matchups. I had some great matchups with them in, in my day. Southern is playing excellent right now, so both teams kind of going in different directions. UE's been struggling. Southern is one of the hottest, if not the hottest team in the league right now. Take a look at those Missouri Valley Conference standings. UNI sits atop of the heap, but SIU surging. A team picked to finish last in the league sits tied for second. Yeah, it's, it's similar to how Bradley was last year. Started off slow, and now they're just getting hot at the right time, and that's what it's that's what it's about in college basketball. Who can put it together in the right time, right here in the conference season, take that momentum into Arch Madness, and then hopefully into postseason play. Marcus Damask, one of the best freshmen in the country, probably the freshman of the year in the Valley this year. Uh, I love the kid's name, first of all, but Marcus Damask can really get it done. I've heard people give references to similar to Doug McDermott. Not super athletic, not going to blow you away with that, although he can create, but he can do a lot of things. He can post, he can rebound, he can shoot. The kid is a flat-out baller. And for Evansville, under Todd Licklider, the corner starting to be turned. Oh, yes, you can see the stats right here. What I've noticed, and I told Coach Licklider after last game, I was here at the game on Saturday, the effort is starting to be there. And even though they're not getting the results in terms of wins, the effort has to be there in turn, and able to win. And so they're diving on the floor for loose balls. They're starting to compete. They're starting to see a little bit more emotion, and that is starting to translate into more points. Brian Mullins, first season at SIU, the former Saluki player. Todd Licklider, his first season in Evansville, still in search of his first win as the Evansville head coach. We are set for basketball. So glad to have you along with us for this one tonight. The Valley on ESPN. Evansville will have the basketball first as we get underway. You look at the starting five for the Purple Aces, Newton, Cunliffe, Riley, Hall, and Kuhlman. Evan Kuhlman having a resurgence of sorts here as of late. We'll tell you more about that later. Sam Cunliffe gets the kiss and three. That has to be good for him. He's been playing well lately, shooting much better. And so to get off to a good start for him gets his confidence up high, and so that's what the Aces need. For the Salukis, it's Suggs, McGill, Jones, Damask, and Benson. Suggs, a name familiar to all Missouri Valley Conference play, uh, fans. He played at Bradley his first two seasons. Now a grad transfer to SIU after a stint at Mizzou. SIU looking inside. There goes Damas, comes up empty. And Evansville goes to work on offense. Shot fake there from Kuhlman. Yeah, Kuhlman's been playing much better. He's kind of replaced Labinowitz in the starting lineup, which, you know, it's good for him, but it's also good for the Aces that they have a scoring threat like Labinowitz coming off the bench. Inside looking. Missing there was Hall, scrum ensues, and SIU will track down the basketball. That, that's the effort I'm talking about. I didn't see that effort for, for quite a few games at the start of the conference season. And so for even though we miss, you see him diving on the floor, competing. That competing right there is what the Aces need to win. Bad pass, Evan Coleman able to get out in front and intercept. 3-0 Evansville, 90 seconds and change into this first half of play. K.J. Riley, the senior leader of this ball club. Now over to the left side, it's Newton, Jawan Newton. Averaging 18 and a half minutes over his last six games for the Aces. Shot clock's at five, and Kuhlman chucks the three. And Evansville's hit their first two shots, both behind the arc line. Yeah, like I said, Kuhlman's been playing so much better. You know, he's... Uh, He's a stretch four. They basically have him playing the five right now, but he's a shooter. And so when he can really shoot the ball, it opens up the lanes and it complements K.J. Riley's game because it opens up the paint and K.J. can start driving to the basket more. Kuhlman got tangled up with Benson inside. Benson called for the offensive foul. Take a look at your keys to the game tonight, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, so for, for the Salukis, they got to feed the three-headed monster. You got McGill. You got Benson, you got Damask. When those three guys are playing well, they are very hard to beat. They've been, the last few games in their streak, they've been averaging about 57 points a game. 
So you got you got to keep feeding them. And for Il Southern Illinois, we're already seeing no three for you. They have to contest UE's threes. They don't have an inside threat. DeAndre Williams is gone, so they're going to rely on the three. So if you can take that away, you have a very good chance to beat the Aces. For Evansville, we already touched on it, their effort. Their effort has to be there. You can have whatever coach on the bench you want over there. You can come bring Phil Jackson out of retirement. If guys aren't playing hard, you're not going to win. And so they have to have they have to play harder and then get easy buckets. They've been struggling on offense, even though they've been doing better recently. You when you're struggling on offense, you have to get easy buckets, free throws, transition, layups. And so they've got to find ways to get some easy buckets so they can get some more points on the board. Coolman blocks the shot, then Riley gets the charge at the other end. Didn't have good control of the body into contact. And the team swapped turnovers. Good block there by Coleman. Then Riley tried to do maybe a little too much here. Yeah, you know what? But I, I like that because when Evansville was playing better at the beginning of the season, they were known for getting up and down and getting out in transition. And they haven't been able to do that. So that's part of what I said, getting those easy buckets. Well, you can get a layup in transition, get a dunk, you know, get fouled in transition. It raises your confidence level when you're able to get those points on the board. You can't win only scoring 55 points a game like they were doing for a while. Damask, the freshman, gets his first bucket of the game. SIU on the board, down four. Riley, one of the best in the country at forcing contact and getting to the line. Trapped for a moment. Ace is able to get free. Here's Kuhlman looking for another three. This one rolls off. No good. Rebound, put back, is good for Newton. I'm telling you, for anybody who is just tuning in, maybe seeing the Aces for the first time, this level of effort, offensive rebounds, diving on the floor for loose balls, things that you're seeing right here, deflections, those are effort plays that you were not seeing. And so Coach Licklider has done a great job of just getting the guys playing harder, which I think once you get that, you're going to start seeing better results. Suggs to the rack, can't buy it. Rebound, though, falls in his hands after a battle for it. And the Salukis will reload. Jones out top with it. Starts to drive with 10 to shoot. Kicks back to Damask. He'll drive on Cunliffe, forces contact, and he'll go to the line. So Damask, the only points on the board for the Salukis, will head to the charity stripe when we come back. Evansville by six. In this one at the Forge Center, Evansville on top of SIU by six. You know, we talk about Marcus Damask, one of the best freshmen this year in the Missouri Valley, and odds on candidate for freshman of the year in the league, and that's nothing new to the Salukis. Yeah, I mean, they have a great history. A lot of those guys up there, I want to say four of them, I, I believe, are in their Hall of Fame. And so, you know, Damask is putting up numbers that only two freshmen in the country are doing, averaging over 14 points a game, five assists and 2.5, I mean, five rebounds and 2.5 assists. And so he's doing a lot of things. Like I said, he can do a lot of things well. And so uh, they have a stud there at the Salukis for the next four years. He's going to be a problem because he can do so much. They started off the game posting up inside. Then you just saw Nice going to the line because he took a guy off the dribble. You're going to see that he's going to knock down some threes tonight. And you can score from all three levels, post, mid-range, penetration, three, it's very hard to defend that. On that list you saw, you also saw the Saluki head coach, Brian Mullins, the freshman of the year in 2006. Only had five and a half points per game, but 94 steals. Amazing number of steals from that guard spot. Second most ever in the Missouri Valley. Also on that list, Ashraf Amaya, Kent Williams, two members of the Top 50 all time in the Missouri Valley. You know a thing or two about that list, partner. I, well, I think I've seen a couple of names on there. I may, <laughs> I may recognize. We'll see what the future holds for the freshman Damask. Obviously, SIU very, very excited about his potential. Coolman can't finish inside. Good defense at the basket. And it goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Salukis. Yeah, we talked about Southern taking away the three because typically Evansville doesn't have. They went inside to Kuhlman that time, but they don't have someone to throw it to in the post. So if you can take away their three, it forces people to start to create one-on-one. -on -one. And to be quite honest, they just that's just not their game. They don't have a lot of guys who can just break you down and create their own shot. So when you can force them to try to do something there, you know, go to their weakness, obviously if that's a strength for you and that's going to give you the advantage to win. So they have to do a much better job of taking away the threes because Evansville's already knocked down two and had another one rim in and out. 
Aces and Cunliffe could not secure the rebound after the miss there by Damask. The Salukis have it underneath the basket. Around a screen comes McGill to the basket for the finish. Missed it. Tries to pull down the rebound. Cannot. Riley secures it for the Aces. Kuhlman. Three starts in a row over Arter Labinowitz for the Aces. Earning some playing time. That's a three from another threat behind the arc line for the Aces and Noah Frederick. You know, this kid, Jones, he's he's really impressed me because they threw him into the lineup after Aaron Cook got hurt. And he had never played the point guard position before. And he's leading a team right now that is the hottest team in the league as a freshman. And so although he may not be a candidate for freshman of the year or anything, when you have a freshman point guard and you're able to win, I mean, that he, he he's playing with such high-level confidence and such maturity, getting the ball to the right people, pushing the ball up court right here. I mean, I've really been impressed with his game. So many young talents on this SIU team. The future bright for the Salukis, no doubt. They trail by three. Here's Riley finding a way for the Aces. Lead is five. Well, that's what happens when Kuhlman knocks down threes. When you can get your big, and he's playing the five right now, where you can stretch him out, and that takes a big away from the rim. There's no one there to contest. And, and KJ Riley is 6'6". He's a slasher. He can get to the rim and finish with a lot more it creates a lot more space and no shot block to, the, to contest the shots. Riley, too much alteration on the approach to the basket, comes up empty there. Leading to a run-out opportunity, and that's McGill, McGill with a basket. The Eric, reigning MVC Player of the Week. Eric McGill has been playing extremely well. Like you said, the reigning MVC Player of the Week, averaging 23 points a game, 67% from the field in the last two wins, very athletic. You know, Southern has three, like I said, a three-headed monster. McGill can do a lot of things and create. Then you have Damask who can create. And then you have Benson, who's a really good inside player. So they have a multitude of ways that they can score. Five to shoot for the Aces. Somebody's going to have to throw it toward the basket. It will be in the corner, but it's too late. Shot, Shot clock, clock violation. Evansville took too much time. Shot put up there by Russell Shamar Lewis Givens. And had nine of his previous 15 field goals over the last five games before forced to take that one ahead of the shot clock horn. And the Salukis have a chance to tie with a three ball here down three. Not a whole lot of offense in the first part of this ball game either way. Well, we've been talking a little bit about the Salukis' ability to score, but really what they're known for is defense. Yeah. I mean, they, they are an extremely, extremely good defensive team. 13th in the country in defense. 13th in the country. Not, we're not talking about ranks in the Valley. 13th in the country in points per, per game, only giving up 60 points a game. And they do it without fouling. And so they're just an excellent, excellent three, uh, defensive team. Givens pull up from the left side. Collision after on the rebound attempt. Shot was blocked, and now Givens getting back. The called for the reach-in foul. Schumer Givens, his first, the team's third. Good block shot. Leading to the Saluki possession. And then Givens, the little bump. Against the freshman guard, Trent Brown, another freshman. Yeah, that's what I'm so surprised about with Southern is, you know, when you, when you have freshmen, you're going to make freshman mistakes. But they just play with such maturity. You know, it's a really testament to Coach Mullins. If I had a vote, which I don't, but if I had a vote, I would vote for him as Coach of the Year right now. What he's doing with this squad, with all the youth. They have 11 newcomers this year, tied for fifth most in the nation. I mean, when you lose your starting senior point guard, Aaron Cook, after six games, and you're still able to play at this level, uh, that's a testament to Time coaching. Alex, our City camera courtside. person sitting courtside, took that one right to the noggin. But kept the shot steady. We know that. Evansville leads this one by 10. More fun to come. It's the Valley on ESPN. Back to Evansville. The Purple Ace is maintaining the lead by three over SIU, approaching the halfway point of this first half of play. It's been back and forth. Evansville got off to the hot start behind the three-point line, been able to maintain the lead thus far. Yeah, I mean, they came out and knocked down the first two threes. They gave them a nice boost. They haven't been able to score much very uh, very much since. 
you know, this is a pace that Southern wants to play at. They can, they can win these low-scoring games. And so I think, you know, Evansville has to continue putting points on the board while Southern is struggling because once they get their thing rolling, they have those three guys who can score. And their defense is not going to go away. So a low-scoring game, I think, you know, Southern wants that because they know that they, they can lock down on defense. Evansville has to take advantage of this opportunity to try to stretch this lead and build a lead uh, before, you know, hope, they would hope that before Southern gets things rolling. I mean, they, they don't want Southern to get things rolling. To this point, the Salukis just three field goals through the hoop, four turnovers. Not the cleanest of starts for SIU in this hot streak they've played. There's a five straight off balance a bit. Was Labinowitz trying to finish? And it leads to a turnover for the Aces. Salukis back with it, a chance to tie. Southern's rotation defense is, 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 is awesome. So when Evansville penetrates, someone's going to come over and help. And then that second help guy who helps the helper is always there. Is always there. And you don't see that. And that's a, that's a, that's something that's hard to coach, but it shows that everyone's bought into it and they have a great philosophy and everyone is doing their, their role and their responsibility on defense for the Salukis. Shamar Givens for the Aces. Now Kuhlman Labinowitz checked in during that last stoppage of play. Finds Hall for two. It rolls out. You talked about Evansville, a team that has really kind of struggled, but putting forth more effort, starting to turn that corner in a game with probably, arguably, the hottest team in the Valley. You built an early lead. They're struggling, but the Aces have not been able to add to that lead. Exactly. That's why I said they need to take advantage of this time because Southern isn't, you know, they're missing layups. They're not able to put the ball in the basket. You would hope to be up seven, eight, ten points by now. The shot clock reset and shouldn't have. That's why they stopped the play here. That will allow the Salukis to make a change as Jones and Damask return to the court. Shot clock is reset to five seconds for SIU. It has been a fun battle to watch John Hall for the Aces, Barrett Benson inside for the Salukis. Underneath the Saluki hoop, step back move for three. We're tied. The freshman Lance Jones delivers. Tough shot there by the freshman. Like I said, playing very well for the Salukis. Tied up at 10. Evansville looking to try to reclaim the lead. Frederick King finds Hall, who switched pivot feet. A turnover. I mean, th this is unbelievable, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the Salukis right now have four freshmen on the court. Four. And they have a, a, a fifth-year senior uh, in Benson. But, you know, usually when teams are playing four freshmen, it's a rebuilding year. It's because, you know, you're, you're not playing very well, and you might as well get the freshmen some experience. They're playing four freshmen at a, at a cru at quality minutes of the game and, and competing well, which, you know, is phenomenal for the Salukis. They have to be, their fan base have to be really excited about this year and beyond. Well, kicked out of bounds there by the Aces. Shot clock to 20 for the Salukis, but you're right. When do you see that many freshmen on the floor at one time and so many of the freshmen already with accolades for Coach Mullins, topped by Damask, who just sent the ball back in play. He's got it now, goes to the rack and scores. Marcus Damask, two more. Yeah, he is, uh, he posts. I, you know, he goes off the dribble, and then you have to play him closer, even though he's not, you know, he doesn't have the most quickness, you have to get up in his space because he will shoot the three right in your face. And then when you're up in his space, he's very good at angles and using his body to either draw fouls or get to the basket and create angles to, for either uh, the and one or create fouls or just finishing at the rim. He's really nifty and uh, has a lot of craftiness to his game. Senior K.J. Riley returning to the court for the Aces. Evansville will have the basketball 11 to shoot. Trailing for the first time. Shot clock at seven. Labinowitz to the baseline, to the basket for the finish. What a play. That was a good drive and even better finish to get up, switch hands, finish with the left off the glass. That's a tough shot. Great move there by Labinowitz. He has struggled a bit for field goals in the last five games coming in averaging nine a game Labinowitz 
placed in the starting lineup the last three by the man who's got the ball now, Evan Kuhlman. Now Labinowitz calling for Cunliffe. Into contact, they'll say Cunliffe will shoot two. And really tell defensively how good SIU is and, and really recognizing Cunliffe is a player they want to take out if they can, stop his scoring. For Evansville, he's been a real impact player, really, for the Aces since DeAndre Williams' departure because of the injury the last eight or nine games now. Exactly right. He's one of the he's one of the few guys that can really create his own shot. You know, K.J. Riley, he can create, but it's going to be at the rim. He's not going to uh, shoot threes or, or even he doesn't really shoot much of the mid-range either. But Cunliffe can shoot the three, pull up, get to the basket. Benowitz and Cunliffe, I think, are their best creators. And so if you can take those guys out of the game and take away the three, then it limits Evansville's options and their ability to score. Free throw for Cunliffe. It's Evansville up one. Looking to shoot Damask with a shot fake at least. Now back to Jones looking inside Benson. He's got Kuhlman this time. Good spin move, finish, and one. Yeah, that's uh, if, I, if I'm if i Southern, I'm throwing the ball into Benson every time uh, right now. You know, Kuhlman is a big, but he's a, he's more of a finesse big. He's a shooter. You know, Benson is a, is a true big man. He's 6'10", played three years at Northwestern Big Ten basketball. So now he's here in the Valley. He has experience. Uh, you got to feed that guy right now because uh, I think he has an advantage inside. Free throw, no good, but a held ball Possession on the Saluki. rebound. We'll give the ball back to the Salukis. SIU by one. Inbounds to Benson. He'll hand it back to Jones, who'll pull it out to reset. Benson again with Kuhlman providing pressure. Got free and then got tangled up and he is down and wincing in pain a bit but appears to want to Looks come like back up. up. Looks like he's Good. all right. Good. Kuhlman tried to sell the charge. Didn't get it done, and then the feet yeah. got tangled. But Benson has scored four in a row for the Saluki. They we, lead by three. We just said that. I said, you know, you got to keep feeding them, and what do they do? They come out of, the, uh, out of bounds, give it to them in the post, scores a quick bucket. Don't be surprised if they just keep feeding them. Here goes Riley to the basket, but missed the finish at the hoop. A rare miss in a play like that for the senior K.J. Riley. Saluki's a chance to continue to add to the lead. Evansville, one of five. The last five attempts from the floor. The Salukis have gone four of five. They're starting to heat it up on the offensive end. Benson stripped, but it's picked up and into the hoop for Damask. Good hands right there. Just luck, uh, unlucky bounce for the Aces. SIU by five, that's their largest lead. The freshman Damask already with seven. Kuhlman needing help. Yeah, you're starting to see the Saluki's defense and why they're so good. I mean, they don't give up. They make you shoot shots like that, off the dribble, contested twos, and, they, and they're tough. Hell ball, arrow favoring Evansville, but the shot clock is only at two. Evansville will have it when we come back. The Salukis by five. Single session discounted tickets for the 2020 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship are on sale now. Reserve your seat to the 30th anniversary of Arch Madness in St. Louis by ordering online at archmadness.com. 30th anniversary of Arch Madness. Where will these teams stack up in the field? SIU leading Evansville by five. And it's going to be a special time under the arch in St. Louis. Coming around postseason play, the 30th anniversary of Arch Madness. You know, it's a great time for people that haven't been there. You know, Thursday and Friday, there's just such 
uh, an electric feel. You know, you have all the teams there, everybody, you know, all the fan bases. And so all those people are gathering at Ballpark Village and going over to the game. And obviously people start losing after Thursday and Friday. But, you know, on Saturday there's only four teams in the championship game on Sunday. But, you know, if you get an opportunity to come over there, you really should as a fan. Uh, whether you get tickets or not, you need to be in St. Louis and, and, and be a part of the fan base and, 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 and experience what they're doing there in St. Louis with Arch Madness. Evansville with just two seconds to work with on the shot clock. That one rejected out of bounds. The clock may not have shown it moved, but it moved by fractions of a second off the deflection. So really less than two. Hustling up, it's Cousin! And they will take a look to see if he got it off in time. That it looked like close. he got it off. I think so. I by think the he did. naked eye, I'd say it's good. But the officials will go to the monitor to take a look. Boom, boom. They count it. It is good for Cunliffe. Tough finish. But a much needed hoop for the Aces as the Salukis had started to pull away. There you see, good shot off his hand. Shot clock still says one. Good yep. basket. Yep. Our crew right on top of that one for you. Salukis by three. With talented freshman Brown brings it down the court. There's another freshman Jones. And a foul on SIU will send us the other way. Got caught with the push off right there. You can use your shoulder, but you can't extend that arm. As soon as you extend that arm, most likely you're going to get called for the push off. Salukis so make a couple of changes. Evansville a chance to try and tie this game back up. The Aces scored the first six points of this ball game. A couple of threes, their first two shots behind the arc line. Here's Cunliffe cutting and slamming it home with authority. Yeah, I think people forget how athletic he is sometimes. You know, to take off right there, you, you see his athleticism. You know, if he can just put it all together, with his athleticism, being able to create on his own, he can be really special. Just got to play at that high level more consistently. But golly, that kid can fly. Showed off right there, Evansville within one. Nine to shoot, touch foul coming on the Aces out top. Hand check foul on Jawan Newton. It's the fifth team foul on the Aces. Newton asking for and receiving the explanation. And the Salukis have it, leading by one. Senior McGill. Nine to shoot, looking for Damask. Haven't called his name in a bit, but we will hear a finish at the hoop for the freshman. That's just angles. For, so people watching, we were just talking about how athletic Cunliffe is. He is by far more athletic than Damask. But Damask is just really good off the pivot. He gets his angles. He gets you on his shoulder. And he knows how to get to the basket and, and, and create. So a lot of times, you just you know, you see Larry Bird, you see guys like that who know how to use angles, and they can just get by you. And, you know, he's going to be a great YMCA player when he's 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know a thing about that too, partner, huh? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Here's Benson trying to go to work on Hall. That has been an entertaining matchup to watch. The foul called from out top goes on Hall. Aces fans here at the Ford Center, ooh and ah. Well, I would love to see that replay. I, I, I see K.J. Riley. Riley. Yeah. I see K.J. Riley uh, feeling like he got off ball. I thought he grabbed the wrist, but let, let, let's see right here. Number 40, Eric. That's a clear foul. Yep, KJ. good call. <laughs> That's yep. a clear foul. Hit the arm. I think fans, myself included, in that uh, group got kind of caught up watching the action with Hall and Benson, and it was Riley who came in, slapped the arm. That's a foul. Good call. Benson at the line shooting two. Hits the first. Here comes the next. Got them both. 69% free throw shooter coming in. Hits two. And he's up to six points on the night. Saluki's so pushing that lead back to five. And that ball loose. Covered up by Hall. Held ball here. We'll give it 
to the Aces. Hall a little slow to get up after the all-out dive. One of the things I'm really impressed with about their defense is, I mentioned it earlier, their rotations. But even before that, their ability to keep the ball in front of them without fouling. You know, usually when they, when guys are penetrating, you, you get a lot of hand checks uh, because you can't move your feet. These guys move their feet, keep the ball in front without fouling, which makes it so much easier on the help side defense. Tough look for Hall. Can't finish with a shot clock getting late. Salukis with the rebound and a chance to add to the lead. They like what they see with Benson. He'll move against Hall again. Kicks it out. Inside out. That's Davis for three. No good. That ball nearly tipped in by the high-leaping Cunliff, but the Aces will secure it. Here's Givens. Finds Cunliffe. He's had the hot hand as of late. Cannot get that one. Hall, though, the offensive rebound. Inside out. That's Frederick. It rattles out. No good. That's a good shot. When you get your one of your best shooters shooting wide open, you got to take that shot, whether it's usually off a of one pass or five passes. That's what you do. You run the play to get a good shot by your good shooters. You just got to knock it down next time. Evansville's first two threes of the game went in. They've gone 0 for 4 from beyond the arc line since. Nice move by Damas to get free, but can't hit the shot. We have to climb up on both of these baskets and make sure there's not a lid on the rims. <laughs> not a lot of scoring as of late. Either way. Here's Newton driving. Tough shot. Can't finish. Again, well defended on the take there by the Salukis. All alone at the basket for the score. Davis. Getting back was Davis. Uh, and Evansville yeah. calls a timeout as the Salukis have pushed this to a seven-point game. SIU by seven, Sam Cunliffe with the game's biggest highlight. To the basket. SIU on a bit of a run. They push the lead out to seven. That's their largest of this ball game. Yeah, I think that was a good timeout by Coach Licklider. You know, we have been talking about their, their Evansville's effort being much better, but Plays like that when you're bringing the ball up the court and there's a guy wide open up under the rim. And there's guys back. They're just not communicating. That's where you have to bring them back in and remind them to get back to the details. Get back, find a man in transition. Whether it's your man or not, it's our it's our team versus theirs. You know, that finger point and saying, oh, that, that's your guy. That's a, it's When they score two points, it's against all of us. So I'm sure that was one of the messages that he gave in that, in, in that timeout. And they got to just start playing tighter and, and together with, with, with more effort like they did to start the game. Evansville has gone scoreless for around three minutes of game action here, needing a basket to get this closer before the break. They look for Cunliffe. That's a three. It's a tough shot. That was a good play out of the timeout to get Sam the ball, and he responded by making. You know, it's a good feeling when they call the play for you and you knock it down. It's like, Coach, keep calling my number. And I know Sam wants to keep putting the ball up, so good shot there coming off that screen. Averages 11 a game. Has 11 here before halftime in this one. Had 14 in the Aces last game. Looking to move inside. Offensive foul, the call against Suggs. I think he got a little hook right there, which, you know, you got a little defender moving moving his feet very, you know, very well, and he tried to hook and got caught by the ref on the baseline side. So Evansville a chance for points and back-to-back -back possessions. Seven-point lead for the Salukis, down to four. Cunliffe again with it. Cunliffe to the basket. No foul and no good on the shot. Todd Licklider, hands went in the air. He wanted that foul, didn't get it. You know, Sam has been playing much better under Coach Licklider. I, I, I don't know if they have a, a really good relationship or Coach Licklider just loves his, his ability, but he's been going to him more. You see they were intentional about getting him the ball last play and then called his number again right here. So Sam is playing with much, with much more confidence, and it looks like Coach Licklider has that confidence in him, which I know helps. Gibbons will slow it up. Cunliffe in transition left that one short. Missed his last two shots after hitting a big three to start Evansville on the comeback. 90 seconds left here in the first half.
Looking inside, but that's too far out of the reach of Damask. The 6'6 freshman couldn't track it down. It goes back to the Aces. You know, I'm really just amazed when I see Damask post how close and how much space he eats up. Like, he gets down. He must have incredibly strong legs because he just backs the guy down. He, he, that was just a bad pass. But he had Sam Cunliffe basically up under the rim. That was going to be two points. And every time he posts that he's intentional about getting the ball there, he really moves. So, I mean, the kid to have that type of ability as a freshman is, is, is phenomenal. Cunliffe missed that shot, maybe trying to be a little too aggressive that time. He's now missed three straight. The Aces have missed eight of their last nine attempts. The Salukis, meanwhile, have gone scoreless for over two minutes now. Kuhlman will bring it out. Coach Todd Licklider signals in the new play call. A 23-second difference between the shot clock and game clock as the Aces go to work. Givens across unselfish to Newton for the finish. That's what Givens does. He's second in the Valley in assist to turnover ratio. He's not a big-time scorer, but what he does is he brings a very high level of energy. He defends well, and then he can create, not for himself, but he'll get to the paint and then be able to create for others. Shot clock is off. Salukis will look for the final shot of the half. Leading by two, they will spend a time out here to get a good look in the final 9.3 seconds of this one. You know, it's interesting, partner, you look at trends and how things have gone. Evansville, in their last ball game, really, really struggled in the first half, had one of the lowest scoring totals they had had all season. 16 in the first half and erupted in the second half for 52. Still lost the game, but... If you're going to become a second-half team, a game like this, I guess, is the is the one to do it in. Well, I don't see the, I don't see any team in the conference scoring 52 points and a half right. from Southern or Bradley. So, you know, I think Agreed. it was a good matchup for them to be able to do that against Northern Iowa. But, you know, I, the Southern team is just so sound defensively. Is they're comfortable in these low-scoring games. And uh, Evans was like I said, that was part of the keys of the game. You got to find easy buckets because in the half court, they're going to take a lot of that away. So you have to try to get on transition and hopefully get some easy buckets off of the ATOs, which is after timeouts. Um, and, and that's that's how you have to beat this team. Final nine seconds of this first half. The Salukis wanting to add to the lead. They go right to the basket, come up empty. Second chance follows short, and that's the half. It has been back and forth in this first half of play. We reach halftime. The Salukis lead it by two. Back here at halftime, a good game of ruin. Southern Illinois leading by two over Evansville here at the half. Time for us to take a look at the standings in the Missouri Valley Conference. There you see SIU battling at the top of the league. Evansville still in search of their first win. Yep, yep. Southern was predicted, I think, to finish second to last. So to be in tied for second right now, again, is just a testament to what the great coaching job that Coach Mullins is doing this year. Time to look around the valley. This might be a, a graphic that the Coach Mullins wants to show his team in the locker room. Look at that score from Terre Haute. Yeah, Indiana State's playing really well, but this turns into an even more important game for the Salukis because now the Loyal is going to lose, and it's hard to beat Valpo and Valpo. They could be going into first place after this game, so I'm sure they want to finish this game. You always want to win, but now knowing that you can go into first makes it even more vital. A lot riding perhaps in this one for the Salukis. Evansville looking for that much-needed feel-good win. What will win out? Find out as we come back. More to come. It's the Valley on ESPN. Back here at the Ford Center, getting set for the start of the second half of play. SIU leading this one by two. Partner, this one has been entertaining through this first half of play. Yeah, it's been a low-scoring game, which Southern, you know, you have to expect that when you're going to play the Southern uh, Illinois Salukis. They're going to really lock up on defense. Again, Evansville has to find ways to get easy baskets because they're just not going to be able to get enough points in the half-court offense to, to win this game. Looking at the key players for both of these teams, obviously it starts for SIU with a freshman, Damask, who's had a nice first half. Well, my man Marcus is really, you know, playing well. He's got nine points, really efficient, which he usually is, four for seven from the field, and really just scoring in a lot of ways and loose balls. He's going to knock down some threes in the second half, but Evansville's been doing a good job. Cunliffe on the other end, 
just is playing well. You know, he had that stretch right there where, he, you know, I think he took a couple bad shots. But overall, four for nine from the field, two for four from three with 11 points. And so both these guys have to continue scoring points. I think Southern wants to try to find other people to compliment Damask, which we expected out of Barrett. And McGill had a very quiet first half. And so they have the capacity to put up more points. Evansville is just going to have to keep up this defense if they want to stay in the game. That's a look at our star watch. More to come. Second half action when we come back to Evansville. Kid's got a good number choice, doesn't he? Number five right there. I would love to see, but I believe, oh, he just got aces on the back. I wanted to see Wilson on the back of there. There you but, go. Hey, <laughs> you know, I had a flashback there for a second. Kyle Peach, Marcus Wilson, the all-time UE great twos. Number five is hanging from the rafters here at the Ford Center. We welcome you back as the Purple Aces looking for their first win in Valley play against SIU looking for their sixth straight, and here's how the first half stacked up. Well, yeah, I think, you know, what, what jumps out is the low field goal percentage for both teams. You know, you expect for Southern to hold teams to a, a low field goal percentage, but credit to the Aces. The fact that they're holding uh, Southern to 38.5 when, you know, Southern typically shoots about 44% from the field. So the, good job by the Aces. That's what's keeping them in the game right now. Obviously, 22 points is not enough uh, to, to, to win this game, but as long as you play defense, it keeps you in the game, and now this half, each team wants to see who can get hot and kind of stretch the lead. Well, second half is underway. SIU with the ball and the lead as we get going. What kind of adjustments are you looking for both these teams to make? Well, I, I would like to see McGill get a little bit more involved. He's the reigning NBC player of the week, and he's been averaging 23 points a game, shooting 67% from the field over the last couple over the last couple of games. And so for him to only have two at halftime, I would try to get him the ball, continue to feed the ball into Benson, and then Damas is going to keep doing what he what he does. And so for Southern, just stick to the basics. I think for Evansville, the question is, who can score besides Cunliffe? Uh, K.J. Riley's going to have to try to get some buckets and uh, Labinowitz. But they just don't have, without DeAndre Williams, they just don't have enough offensive firepower. That one turned over by the Aces. Newton, here's McGill going to work for two. McGill. Wow. I don't know if that was bad defense or he was just extremely fast, but he just went by him trying to take the charge. And again, I think you want to get him involved because the kid can get hot fast. And then when he's scoring from the point guard position, you have to close, you have to start focusing on him. And then again, it just makes everybody around him better. Back to back turnovers for the Aces. The Salukis have scored the first four, looking for more of this second half. Here's McGill again, pull up jumper. This one won't go. Rebound out to Riley. Evan Kuhlman into the jump stop for three. No good. A cold start for the Aces through the first 90 seconds of the second half. You know, without DeAndre Williams, the Aces have to, you know, they end up relying on the three so much. And so when the three isn't falling, that's why you've seen them lose some games pretty pretty bad uh, just because there's just no other way to get, to get baskets. Kuhlman comes in, picks up the block. Kuhlman throws it down the other way. Again, his athleticism, I don't think there's anybody in the Missouri Valley Conference that has more athleticism than him. You see it right there. You saw it in the first half with the two-hand jam. Uh, and those are the baskets that Evansville needs, the easy baskets in transition where they're not going against all five and that half of uh, the Saluki's half-court defense. Well, you see McGill trying to get more involved. You talked about that. That time ran into a wall defensively. Riley doing what Riley does, running into contact and earning a trip to the free throw line, one of the tops in the country in that department. 32nd in the nation in free throws made, 48th in free throws attempted. This will be his 130th attempt of the season coming up here at the line. Yeah, he does a good job of putting the pressure on the refs. You know, there, there's time, and, and when he goes to the basket, he's always going for an Oscar. Sometimes <laughs> there's a foul, sometimes it's not, but he's gonna make the refs feel and when you're at home and then the, you know, the fans start screaming and moaning, it puts pressure on the refs to make calls and that's why he's one of the best in the nation at getting to the line. One of the best at, the, at getting to the stripe, doing so against a team that really doesn't let that happen in the second half of games. Some impressive statistics for SIU, nothing free in the second half this year. Yeah, 
coaches always say defend without fouling, and the Salukis have been doing that at a level that I have not seen in college basketball. To have a 55 to 10 free throw advantage in the second half. You know, the second half, you know, games are close. They've been having some close games. There hasn't been blowouts. So to be able to play at that level, a high level of defense without fouling is just tremendous. John Hall had a chance to tie the game, but came up empty right underneath the basket. Double teamed inside Benson, fighting through it. Blocked shot by Kuhlman, the second of the half. But he's out of bounds. Moose is faithful here at the Ford Center, liking the effort from Evan Kuhlman. You know, if I'm Southern right now, I hear the ace, I hear the crowd getting into it. I want to get the ball inside. I want to get an easy basket, or I want to draw a foul. Inside that one, Benson able to it's shake free and score. Exactly right. At, th at that at that point in the game, you don't shoot a three. I don't care if you, are, I mean, you're wide open. Maybe if you're wide open, but at that point, you wanna you wanna get the crowd out of the game. You need to score and you need to get inside. And that's what the Aces need to do at times instead of relying on the three. But they just don't have that big to be able to go to like that. Benson, eight points, four boards tonight, coming off a double double against Drake. Here's a drive inside. Can't find the roll. Newton comes up empty. Damask to the rock for two. What a drive by the freshman for the finish. We, I touched on it in the first half. That was just all angles and using his body. He kept the much faster Newton on his shoulder by keeping, he kept the contact. So therefore, Newton couldn't detach from him and use his speed to get out in front. He kept him on his shoulder and then just finished at the rim because he's 6'6". Senior, Senior Riley, Riley finding a lane to the basket. K.J. Riley, two more as he starts to heat up here in the second half. Good to see some more points getting put on the board. It was a little dead in the first half for both teams. You know, for, you want to see this college basketball atmosphere with the fans getting involved. And they're getting up and down a little bit more, which is much more exciting basketball. Again, the Salukis looking for their sixth win in a row. Kuhlman knocked it away. Benson battling, got it back, then lost it again. What a battle we've seen in the paint tonight. Riley fouled in the backcourt. Salukis have won five in a row, but four of the five decided by seven or less. Marcus Damask, and the big reason why SIU's been on a run. More to come as we come back. Back here at the Ford Center, the Salukis leading the Aces by four. It has been back and forth all night long between these two. And tell you what, we've seen some good defense, not only by the Salukis, which you expect coming in, but boy, Evan Kuhlman and the Aces have stepped it up defensively tonight. Evan Kuhlman is, is playing the best defense I've seen him play in the last two years. He's been tough. The 30th anniversary of Arch Madness tips off March 5th through 8th in St. Louis, and the only place to celebrate before and after all the action on Enterprise Center is the MVC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village. The MVC Fan Hangout is the ideal place, showcasing a diverse offering of restaurants, entertainment, nightlife, attractions, and everything Arch Madness. For additional information, download the Arch Madness app today. Not quite Ballpark Village, but the <laughs> Ford Center Fan Hangout. Hey. As Evansville leads this one by three, or excuse me, SIU leads this one by three. The fan hangout here, you know, it, you see some, some Southern fans down there. I mean, Aces people, Evansville people are nice people. They, you know, it's come down. Everybody have a good time down there at the hangout. Now, it, it is not quite Ballpark Village, but <laughs> they're trying. You should go check it out at Arch Madness, no doubt. Fun place to be. SIU by three, there goes K.J. Riley looking for the tie from the corner. It's Newton, no good. Offensive rebound, Labinowitz kicks it across to Frederick. He'll drive, another pass, and another foul this time on SIU. That will be the sixth team foul on the Salukis. I thought K.J. was a little bit too unselfish right there. So you always want to be unselfish, but I mean, he had a layup, and he kicked it out to a 28% three-point shooter. You know, I, I think you got to take the two right there, but Hey, you know, sometimes you got to look at the positive side that, you know, moving the ball, they're playing better. You know, that's the coaching moment. That's when you go back and watch film and you teach that, uh, you teach that, you know, you got to take that layup right there, KJ. Third foul on McGill. Evansville still looking for points this trip down the court. 
within three. And how about this? And a team that doesn't foul in the second half, the next foul by the Salukis puts Evansville at the line the rest of the way. Another three forced up by the Aces in Hall, and not very good looks that trip down for the Aces. Yeah, that was a bad miss. But, you know, we talk about them not fouling, but they haven't played anybody with the likes, at the likes of K.J. Riley. He forces you to foul, or he gets to the basket and scores. Trying to take over here. The freshman missing the shot to mask. Lepinowitz the rebound for the Aces. Another opportunity to tie. They go to the senior. He kicks out to Hall, but before the pass, the charge on the Aces senior Riley. If third I, foul on Riley now. If, if, I'm, if I'm the Aces, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned because it feels like they're playing well right now, right? It feels like they're playing well, and they're still down three. Uh, and it looks like Southern is not playing well. Damas is missing the easy post, you know, shots. And, and so these are the times, like, when you're playing well, you really want to try, we said this in the first half, you want to try to extend that, well, not extend that lead. You would like to get the lead at, at this point and then try to extend it while Southern is struggling. So SIU looking to try to add to that three-point lead. The Aces as we approach 10 minutes to go. Have seen uh, Riley now turn the ball over three times. On the game, last one there, on the charge. Evansville, one of their last five from three-point range. They're trying to look for that tying shot. Salukis have gone scoreless for nearly two minutes. Tough look there. One of the foul, didn't get it. Evansville back, and another opportunity to cut further in. Here's Frederick drives, pull up jumper, no. is good. One point game. Good defense that last trip down by the Aces. Forced them into a tough shot. Got out in transition like, we, like they used to do. Like you used to see them doing in non-conference and got an easy bucket. That's the Evansville effort and the type of play that they need. Foul before the pass really came into Benson on the Aces defensively. That's on John Hall. And that is the fourth team foul on Evansville in this second half. You notice whenever Evansville goes on a run, Southern is very intentional about let's get the ball inside. I always say that when Evansville starts to miss a few shots like or the other team goes on a run. Don't try to shoot your way through it. Don't try to get it all back at once and shoot threes because if you miss, it's long rebounds and it keeps the run going. Southern is very intentional about when the crowd starts getting into it, slow it down, get exactly what they want, and they usually try to get a shot in the paint. Salukis have gone three minutes now without a basket. Evansville on a 9-2 run the last four minutes. The mask feeling his way out, kicks it out. A little leaner that goes in. That's for Davis. Another freshman stepping up in a big way. Back to a three-point lead for the Salukis. Riley. Again, moving to the basket. Too easy. Riley, two more. And Evansville within one again. Well, KJ's playing really well. I'm surprised to see you rarely see a guy dribble from 24 feet away from the basket, get all the way to the rim against the Southern Illinois defense. Back to within one. Here's Davis. Now to Mask. Inside Benson. Barrels in to Kuhlman. No whistle. Basket good. Back to three, the Saluki lead. That was a charge. And what I noticed by Evan Kuhlman right there, he's playing the scout. Benson is left shoulder, left shoulder, left shoulder. What that means is he's, for guys who basketball don't understand basketball terms, when he gets in the post, he's going to want to turn to his left shoulder so he can shoot with the right hook. Evan Kuhlman set on his left shoulder, and Benson just went through him and charged. That was, just, uh, I, that was great defense. I think they just, uh, the refs missed the call right there. Missing the shot, Labinowitz kind of near the basket, could not convert. Rebounding margin nearly even. Saluki's a chance to make this a two possession game again. I'll just shoot from there. The freshman Damask cashes in for two. Yeah, his, mid, his mid post game is so dangerous. You, you get up on him, he's going to back you, he's going to go by you, he can back you down. And then when you step, take a step back, thinking that he's about to penetrate, then he just knocks down the mid range jump shot. Here's Kuhlman. Thought about the three. Evansville has really struggled as of late behind the arc line. 
One of their last five. They'll try this one from Frederick short. And another possession coming up empty for the Aces and a chance again for the Salukis to rebuild that lead. Offense running through Damask against Labinowitz. Can't get it. Rebound into the corner, saved, but it goes right toward the Saluki basket. Waiting is Davis. He puts it in for two. It's one of those ones where they always, the coach always tells you, don't, don't save it up under the other team's basket. Especially when you got two guys going out of there. Now you're saving it into a situation where you're five on three. It's better just let it go out of bounds and set up the out of bounds defense. Evansville had cut it to one. This is Kuhlman. Bombs away for three. No good. A 6-0 run for the Salukis to push the lead back to seven. They've led by as many as nine. Good defensive adjustment by the Salukis to get somebody long with some length on K.J. Riley because now that they've taken away that, uh, his offensive promise the last possession or two, you've seen Evansville struggle to create shots. Inside, Benson, kick out, big shot for three, no good from Jones. Evansville with a rebound under six minutes to go. This is the time where how, how we've seen Southern go inside when they need a bucket. This is where Evansville is lacking that big where they can go inside and get an easy shot. Riley will take the three, just does draw the iron out of bounds to the Salukis. And we've reached a media timeout here in Evansville. SIU built the lead back up to seven. Don't go anywhere. This one could go right down to the wire. Valley Hoops coming right back. Back here at the Ford Center. The Valley on ESPN, Southern Illinois leading Evansville by seven. The Purple Aces had cut this to a one point game. And then the Salukis come storming back. A 6-0 run of their own to push the lead back to seven. Yeah, I think the difference, you know, there, there's not a lot of difference between winning and losing. Even when it's a 10-point game, it's just a couple possessions that create that 10-point game. And I think the last few possessions have been crucial where it was close and we saw Southern get the ball inside. Even though the mask missed one or two, for the most part, they were getting shots in the paint, exactly what they wanted, and, and slowed the momentum down and, and, slow, and took the energy away from the fans here. Evansville, on the other hand, when things happen like that, they tend to try to shoot their way through it. They tend to try to shoot threes and try to get the excitement going that way. But as you just saw last time down court, you're down seven. You probably need to get it inside, get you know, get an easy bus bucket, but instead you shoot a three, air ball, and now they have a chance to go up nine to 10 points. Evansville, four of 15 in the game from three-point range, considering they made their first two on the night, two of 13 since the early minutes as that ball taken away by the Aces and Newton. Riley has it, calls the timeout to save possession for Evansville. And we'll have more coming your way on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. Exciting finish when we come back. Back here at the Ford Center, this one is Never more than a nine-point game. SIU has led the majority, if not all, of the second half. The lead is seven, and, you know, SIU is on a great streak. They've got a chance to push their Missouri Valley win streak to, to six games. That would be the most since 2007, but they don't, through the years, play well in Evansville. Evansville's won six of the last home game, six of the last nine home games against this SIU ball club, so... Which one of those trends is gonna is gonna push through here tonight? We're gonna find out in the final five minutes and change of this one. Yeah, I think I think the, the Southern team is just very well coached offensively, defensively, and and there there's some some winners on this team. I mean, their coach played in the final in the, in the Sweet 16 and has coached in the Sweet 16, so he knows how to win. Uh, and I think that you know you see that in his players. Kuhlman does it again. Basket and the foul. Well, partner, you're right, talking about Coach Mullins, one of only nine Division I head coaches 
who played in the Sweet 16, was on the staff for Coach Moser up at uh, Loyola in their Final Four run. Obviously knew how to get it done on the court as a player, doing it as a coach here at SIU. And Evan Coleman cannot buy the and one free throw. And the lead for the Salukis stays at five. Really impressed with Evan Coleman. It just goes to show sometimes players play better uh, when, when you have a coaching change. Uh, Charge taken here by the Aces defensively. And goes on Jones. How about the stat line for Coolman? You talked about him. Four points, five boards, six blocks. Yeah, but he's just been, I mean, he's just scored in the post. I, he, he scored on Benson in the post. He's been playing good defense. He's been uh, just adding some toughness in the paint, which Evansville has lacked. And so, you know, kudos to him for stepping up his game. Spots up over in the corner, drives baseline, threads the needle, but Frederick can't cash in. Neither can Riley. The Aces, two misses right at the basket. SIU back to work. The lead is five. Damask feeling out Riley. Backing his way in, draws double team pressure, turns, shoots, missed it. Kuhlman gets the rebound. Good defense there by K.J. Riley. Officials letting him play here in the last couple of minutes, too. That ball knocked away, but corralled by Newton. Good pressure from Suggs. Now Riley spinning, turning, shooting, scoring. K.J. Riley. Back to a one-possession game. That's what Evansville needs to do right now. They're not knocking down the three, so they need to get it and shoot as, you know, get the ball to the paint. And Coach Brian Mullins calls a timeout, sends us to the break. Evansville fighting back within three. The Salukis of Southern Illinois have a three-point lead over the Aces, 49-46. Getting close to the end of this one, so partner, it is time for your certified bucket getter of the game. Like I said, I know a bucket getter when I see one. And you know what? This kid shares a name. So Marcus Damask has really been playing well today. He's missed some easy ones around the basket, but he's really just dominated this game. I mean, the, the offense has gone through him. He's two rebounds away from a double-double, 20 points, eight rebounds, seven for 15 from the field, hit a big three here to kind of get that Southern run, run going. Fifth 20th point game of the season as a freshman, leading candidate for freshman of the year. And you, Marcus, are the certified bucket getter of the game. Great job, young man. From Marcus to Marcus, the CBG passes down the line. Just needs to be wearing number five, then he's got it all figured out, right? <laughs> he's going to get quite a few certified bucket getters slash player of the game slash whatever you call it. He's got a lot more of those coming in his career. Salukis with the ball. Their lead is three, less than four to play in regulation. Here's McGill cutting inside. Gets the pass back out to Suggs. Here's the freshman Damask, two more, up to 22 on the night. Again, the, the offense has went through him even when he's missed shots. He, he was getting the looks he wanted right up under the basket and has just really dominated the tempo uh, uh, of this half-court offense. In case you're wondering, career high in his freshman season, 28. Not that long ago, back against Drake. Here goes Kuhlman, missed the shot. Another miss right out the basket for the Aces, and the Salukis have it leading by five. Yeah, you want to see, you, you want to finish that one at the rim right there. Kuhlman, an extra little twist to the wrist at the basket. Couldn't finish. That ball taken away by Riley. His progress interrupted by a foul there by McGill. That was a good foul there by McGill. Evansville has found their way into the bonus. And their best is at the line in Riley. 81% coming in. It's the fourth foul, by the way, on McGill. Good night tonight for K.J. Riley. 15 points. 
Cunliffe, 13 for the Aces, though he had 11. Was it about two minutes to go in the first half? Two points since then, and Riley has stepped up. Got the free throw, earns the second. So this is a big, obviously, two and a half minutes right here. The, the, these next couple possessions, if KJ can knock down this free throw and you cut it down to a three-minute, I mean, a three-point ball game, you got to get a stop right here. And then who do you go to on offense when you're the, if you're the Aces right now? Who do you go to to get that bucket that you need? And Riley puts it back to a one-possession game. But first things first, they have to get this stop right here. SIU has brought a good showing of fans across the Illinois-Indiana border here to Evansville tonight. Both sets of fans making noise. Evansville forces the turnover in transition. Kuhlman finds Riley in the corner, does not look to shoot. Good Aces decision. will slow it up. Good decision. Wanting a good look as we approach two minutes to go in a one-possession game. Riley lost the handle on it, got it back, kicks it across. Frederick King missed the time chance from the corner. And Evansville continues to struggle from three-point range. They have gone two of their last 14 behind the three-point line. Percentage-wise, Saluki's not much better. But many less attempts. To mask at the basket, lock shot Riley. Second chance follow, no good. Tipped out to Damask, who doesn't shoot. Bodies on the deck everywhere. Slow to get up. Riley and Davis inside. 12 to shoot SIU. Big possession. I love their confidence in this kid. They just keep going to him. And the foul comes on Cunliffe, just the fifth team foul on the Aces here in the second half. And the you, shot clock resets to 20. You want to play for a coach like that, that where you know you can miss a shot, you can turn the ball over, and you don't have to look over to the bench worrying about coming out, coming out of the game. And, and they just keep going back to him. And, you know, that's why he's playing at a high level, in part because of his skill, but in part because the coach is giving him the freedom and the confidence to play his game. Willing his way to the basket, putting up the shot, McGill. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Evansville, number three, Jawan Newton. Newton picks up the foul. That's his second. I was a little surprised to see SIU that aggressive out of that stoppage of play with the shot clock resetting, but it pays off. Yep. McGill to the line. 73% shooter coming in. Missed the first. Well, that's why this is one of the reasons why Southern is so dangerous. Yes, we've seen them go to Damas, Damas, Damas. But then They'll go to Benson. And then even though McGill has been quiet, he's the reigning MVC player of the week, and he can create his own. So when they need a basket, they know they have three different guys. We can get it to them, and they can create a good shot. They might not make it, but they can get what they want. The aces right here, who do you go to? You know, KJ is going to be aggressive coming off the pick and roll. Uh, Sam has been quiet in the second half. So who, who do you go to that can create something? That free throw puts it to a four-point game with a minute to go. 15 to shoot for the Aces. Looking for a good look, but running out of time. Riley with 10 on the shot clock. Crossover move to the basket, fouled, and back to the line will go K.J. Riley for two more free throws. So the crowd was getting antsy right there and, and, and wanting someone to go. But it, what I was just, it was exactly what I was saying. Evan Kuhlman isn't going to take anybody off the dribble one-on-one. -on -one. Jawan Newton isn't really going to go try to create one-on-one. -on -one. Noah Frederick King isn't going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Those guys need someone else to go one-on-one -on -one so their man can help, and then you give them an easy shot. So the only people that can actually do what the crowd was wanting them to do was Cunliffe or K.J. Riley, which is why they were reversing the ball and getting it back to K.J.'s hands. Those are things that fans don't often understand. They just want to see somebody go, but they have to play their strengths right now, and even though it took a little longer than what they wanted, they got it to the guy they wanted to get the ball to and now have a chance to cut it down to two points. That would be the closest Evansville has been in quite some time. Riley, six for six tonight. Trying to make this a two-point game. Second free throw, got it. 52-50 SIU. There is about a 17-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Partner, here we go. Coach Mullins will spend a Saluki 
timeout. So 41.5 seconds left here in regulation. SIU with the ball leading by two. Partner, take me through it. What's SIU talking about in this timeout? What's Evansville talking about? So, so they're going to go. They're going to try to get the ball inside. Obviously, I don't think there's almost any chance that you're going to see a jump shot from the Salukis. Uh, I like the misdirection play that they used out of the other timeout. They couldn't get the ball into the fo into the post, so uh, it was going to work. So one of the plays I know they like to run is it looks like they're going to set a cross screen for Benson, and it looks like they're going to feed it that side, and then they do a quick snap pass back, and the guy who sets the screen, who is Damascus, will turn and pin. I would look to see them try to get the ball to one of those two guys in the post, or if that doesn't work, get the ball to McGill and allow him to create one-on-one. -on -one. And then for the Aces, they have to be ready to get the ball and go and then know who they have to foul. I think, you know, Ronnie Suggs uh, is an excellent free throw shooter. You don't know, you don't want to foul him. He's 91%. You know, Lance Jones is only a 60% free throw shooter. This is where you have to know your scout and know who to foul if you're in that position. It's more than a three-point ball game. Evansville sits at 16 fouls. So the next foul by the Aces will be free throws for the Salukis. SIU is over the limit on fouls. They are at 10 plus fouls right now. Possession arrow, should that become an impact in this game, favors Evansville right now. 25 on the shot clock, 41 and a half on the game clock, SIU with the ball and a two point lead. Ace is not looking to foul, sucks. Davis, out top, McGill driving, block shot, ball ends up going in the hands of Vincent who puts it in for two, and SIU calls another timeout. Lucky break, Benson waiting, picks it up and puts it in. Coolman coming over with the help side defense, and like you said, unlucky bounce for the Aces, lucky bounce for the Salukis, puts them up four points. Back to a two possession game, shot clock is off, 29 seconds to go. Kuhlman, if that stands as a block, picks up his seventh block shot of the game. That's a Ford Center record. But the basket good for Benson comes at a big time for the Salukis. They lead full by four. You know, if I'm a coach, you know, sometimes you make little uh, highlight tapes to show your team the little things you do to win. You know, you might not show a lot of baskets. You'll show somebody getting on the floor for a loose ball or a charge. And what I just saw right there was after McGill got his shot blocked, he stayed with it. He could have just given up and went mentally blank. But on the way down, it fell into his hands. And on the way down, he makes a perfect pass to Benson, just staying aware. Those are the plays that win ball games. You know, and like I said, in, in the games where it's eight, ten points, it's one or two plays like that. That's the difference between winning and losing. Evansville will inlet, Salukis pick up full court, and they commit a foul before the ball is even put in play, and they foul K.J. Riley. I believe he'll go to the line. That is the absolute worst thing that could have happened. And McGill fouls out. So McGill is done. They don't allow any time to come off the clock. Exactly. That's what hurts. And they're, they're probably going to have to put Lance Jones in, which they just did. And Lance Jones is a 60% free throw shooter. So, you know, expect when they throw the ball in coming back from these free throws that you want to inbound the ball into Suggs. Suggs isn't the point guard, but he can bring the ball up, up and down the court, and he's a 90% free throw shooter. So that's what I would do if I was a Salukis, make sure I'm getting the ball to him. But that, you have to know that. It has to be part of the scout. You know that K.J. Riley is going to run to you and draw contact, and then he's going to throw his hands up. If you have your hands out horizontally, he's going to lift up through your hands and going to, again, like I've always said, he puts pressure on the ref to make the call. This you got to keep your hands high and stay away from him. And, partner, this has been an extended delay in getting the Salukis to make the change effectively attempting to ice, in essence, Riley at the line. And now they put in a, a sub in Benson who cannot come into the game because he had just left. So now it'll be Trent Brown who will finally come into the game. And all this time, K.J. Riley has been standing at the free throw line ready to shoot two. 
That was a good sub there by Coach Mullins, bringing in another good free throw shooter. Uh, Brown is an 85, almost 86% free throw shooter for the year. So you have, you know, five, essentially, well, Jones isn't a very good free throw shooter. If, I, if, I, if I'm the Salukis, I'm having him taking the ball out of bounds and getting it into Damascus Suggs. The Aces will look to foul. There's that second half free throw number that has been dominated by the Salukis this season. Evansville winning that battle tonight. And in part because of that, it's a two point game with 29 seconds to go. Salukis have got to get the ball in bounds, nearing five, just ahead of the five count. Now they look to steal the ball. The Aces have it, they take it away. 20 seconds to go. No timeout. Aces no time with the out. play through. No timeout. Wow. Here we go. Down to 12. Down to 11. It's Riley with 10. Riley in the paint. Turns. Into contact. Missed it. Gets it again. Puts it up. We're tied. Riley. 5.4. 4.8. We play through. Salukis running. Shooting for the win. No. Overtime in Evansville. Wow. Big finish there by the Aces to send this game into overtime. Again, it's, just, it's the effort. It was, it's the effort that you have not seen that allowed them to tie this ball game up. And that's why you see these fans standing. I haven't seen fans stand here in multiple games. It's part because you can accept losing. You can't accept losing when people aren't trying. And you see these kids are out here trying and competing, getting loose balls, getting offensive rebounds. These are things that you had not seen. And great job by these kids of re responding and Coach Licklider to get them to play this way. Just getting ready to say, what about the call by Coach Todd Licklider? Doesn't call the timeout, puts the ball in the hands of his senior, and says, you go tie this game. Well, I, I mean, I saw the, the call that he made. And, you know, I'm not going to give away the call, but, like, everybody who scouts, you can see what, what was coming. He was going to run a high pick and roll. So he didn't have to call a timeout. All you, in the timeout, all he was going to do was say, hey, let's get the ball to KJ, set the pick and roll, and KJ – you know, get to the basket and create. And so Southern didn't put them in a position where they had to go to their secondary option, right? They were they made it very easy to get the ball to exactly what they wanted to, K.J. Riley, and K.J. did what a senior does, went down there and made a good play. Well, two halves of basketball, not enough. We'll play overtime as a basket by K.J. Riley in the closing seconds ties it up. That's how you had a pretty good look as the buzzer sounded. But that three point shot would not go. We look at foul trouble here. The Salukis in the greatest of danger foul wise. McGill is gone with five fouls. Jones has four. Yeah, that could be big. If Jones picks up a foul here, they have no more natural point guards out there to handle the ball in overtime. So Jones has to be very careful to not pick up his fifth. Well, we're tied at 54. Bonus basketball here on this Wednesday night from the Ford Center. SIU wins the tap. We're underway in our first overtime. Be sure keeping track. The new SIU head coach's first game in overtime. Going to work, missing the mask. Riley ends up with it. What a second half plus KJ Riley has had for the Aces. Really good defense there by KJ Riley. I mean, I don't think anybody thought that the Aces had a chance to win this ball game. Uh, you know, you're thinking that they're eventually going to break this losing streak, but it didn't, no one thought that this would be the game. Southern, the hottest team coming in here, and for them to be playing in overtime, getting baskets like this, is, is just excellent for this program and for this team. Haven't heard from Cunliffe in a while. He scores the first points in the extra frame for the Aces. He's got 15. And I like how they went inside. They got it to him. They don't have a big, but he, he, they do have big guards. And he's a big guard. They went inside and got what they wanted. Speaking of bigs, here's Benson barreling his way to the basket. Puts it up. Foul called. Count it. And one to come. So that, that, that might be about the third time that I've seen the Aces try to take a charge and not get it. And guys, like, either fall down. I don't know if it's a flop or they're falling down. But at this point in the game, you have to know that the ref isn't going to give you that call. So you have to body up. 
Benson with the and one, a chance to give the Salukis their first lead of overtime. Free throw, missed it. Cunliffe gets the rebound. You're right, we have seen several charge calls not taken. Cunliffe trying to get the floor cleaned up, almost stopped play, asking for help for someone to come clean the floor, and finally someone's headed out there to hop up the wet spot. All tied at 56. Riley, the senior, slip bounce pass to Kuhlman, but sliding in is Jones to take it away. Heck of a pass right there. Heck of a pass. Just it didn't get the finish there by, by Kuhlman. And a job by Jones to see that pass coming and step in front. Here's Suggs, now Davis. The mask to Benson. Shot clock at 10. Benson again going to work inside. Turn, shoots over Kuhlman. Can't get it. Cunliffe high for the rebound. Good defense there by Kuhlman. Again, like they're not going to give you the, the, the charge or the flop. It's obvious. So right there, now you just have to body up, take it in the chest, and, and man up and try to keep him away from the basket, which he did. Riley thought he found a lane, but does find contact. That foul will go on Suggs. And back to the free throw line goes K.J. Riley. Riley has quietly become this game's leading scorer, 23 points, outpacing Damask's 22. Yeah, that's the thing about the certified bucket getter coming right after the the, the four-minute timeout is oftentimes you see guys end up taking over uh, in the last four minutes or when it goes into overtime. You know, KJ's been the MVP these last four minutes of the game and the first, you know, couple minutes of overtime. That's the first miss in ten attempts at the line for KJ Riley tonight. Back on target with a second. Gives Evansville the lead, 57-56 here in overtime. Salukis looking for their first lead of overtime. Shot fake and a drive by Davis, cut off though by Cunliffe. 12 to shoot. Looking to Damask, has to create, turn, shoots, missed it, rebound Cunliffe. Ace is doing a good job on defense, and Southern just can't find someone to score inside. They're, they're, they're getting pretty much what they want. They're getting the ball into the mass, into Benson. But the Aces are just playing really good defense right now. Cunliffe fires up a three, maybe ill-advised. Missed that one from the wing. SIU gets the rebound. We've got two minutes to go in overtime. I mean, I can't think, I can't remember the last time that the Saluki shot a three. They are getting to the paint, and if they miss, they just take it. But they are getting to the paint and getting the ball inside where they want it. There goes Damask, and missed the roll. Rebound, Cunliffe. And the Aces with the lead will likely take the clock under 90 seconds to play in our first, first overtime. Twelve to shoot for the Aces. Here's Riley. Clear it out and let him go to work, but he dribbles it off his foot. Has to try to secure it. Does. Throws a bounce pass that ricochets back, and the shot clock's going to expire before Frederick can pick it up and try to shoot. The time it looked like they tried to just clean it out for K.J. Riley and say, go create. Yeah, they, uh, it was a good defense there by Davis. He, he set on his, on his right hand, I mean, on his left hand. K.J. has been doing a good job of driving left, spinning back, finishing with his right. Davis, I think, noticed that, set on his left, made K.J. go right where the help was, and they were able to get the deflection and subsequently the, uh, the shot clock violation. The officials are over at the monitor. I'm not sure really what this is. If they're looking for shot clock violation, I, that was pretty much, I thought, a no-brainer. But they are over at the monitor taking a look. And maybe putting time on the clock? I'm not sure. It should be 113 and 0. That's where it is now. Yeah, looks, looks pretty clear cut to me. They're trying to put, I think, adjust the shot clock. Well, they put a second back on the clock. 
All that for one second on the clock that I'm not really sure should have gone. But nonetheless, 114, 30 seconds, shot clock. Here we go. That may be a big second in this overtime. That's, That's a, a lot of movement. Jones finishes and the fouls on the aces. Todd Licklider making the travel motion. Thought there was an extra step that wasn't called. Big move the there by the freshman. You know, for, for to be leading this team right now in overtime and to get this and one. Big move there by the freshman. I'm not sure if it was a travel. I think it was borderline. It was a nice Euro step, but big move there by the freshman. And now put the Salukis back up too. Salukis by two. Their first lead in overtime comes with 106 left in the extra period. And Todd Lickliner is going to spend a timeout here with a minute plus to go in our first overtime. SIU 59, Evansville 57. More to come. Stay with us. It's the Valley on ESPN. A minute plus left in overtime. SIU holds the two-point lead over Evansville. Let's check in around all the action around the Missouri Valley Conference. Again, Indiana State getting a big win over Loyola, dominating fashion, and then you were interested in that game up in Valparaiso. Yeah, yeah, you and I is, in, in my opinion, I think you and I is the, the most balanced, and they played the best overall uh, out of all the teams in the Valley. I think they're the best team, and going into Vapo, that's not that's not an easy thing to do to go in there and win and, and they're playing well right now so uh, yeah these all these games matter every game matters you know in the Valley and in conference play because what you don't want to do is you don't want to play on Thursday so for those of you who aren't who never been to Mar Arch Madness the bottom four teams play on Thursday and then those two teams fill in the other two uh, spots and then then there's the quarterfinals starting on Friday it's very hard to win four games in a row so if you're the seventh place team, there's a big difference between sixth and seventh, where a six, you know you have to play three games. If you're the seventh, seven's gonna play 10, which as it looks right now, like Evansville is the 10th place team. So even if you know, you're the seventh place team, you play the aces, eight, nine will play on Thursday. So all these games matter. Uh, and then obviously the seeding at the top, you wanna finish first. And, uh, so all these games matter, and, and there, there's no easy ones in the Valley, especially on the road. Mentioned it earlier, SIU has traveled well here to the Ford Center in Evansville tonight. They find their fans do. SIU by two, a minute to go. Here's Cunliffe, gets the ball in, now out. Three-point shot will stay home for Newton. Big shot, Evansville by one. Big shot there by Newton, exactly Three. right. Newton's got 10, SIU to the basket and finish for Jones. Salukis reclaim the lead. What a gamer, what a gamer for a freshman to get the last two big buckets for the Salukis. 11 second difference between the game clock and shot clock. It's the senior Riley, his team down one with a basketball. Starts to drive, shot clock at 13. Kicks, Kuhlman, three, no good. SIU will get the rebound, the shot clock is off. The Aces have to foul. They pick out Jones with 19.4 remaining. And the Aces have played so well, I don't even want to say anything negative about them or the game. But the fact, but the fact of the matter is, right, this is the difference that we've talked about oftentimes when they need a basket, they rely on the three. And you're gonna live and die with that. And right now, it just didn't work out for him. But when you're down one, in my opinion, you got to find a way to get to the paint. K.J. Riley is drawing fouls, which they're doing a really good job of forcing him right. Uh, because when he's going left, he's killing them. When he goes right, he's fumbled the ball a couple times. They're doing a very good job of making that adjustment. But you got to find a way to get, I believe, in the paint and try to get an easy basket. Jones hits the first, hits the second, 60% coming in for the game at the line. Hits two big ones there. Yeah, right now I'm going straight to the basket. I'm not holding this for the last shot. We haven't made threes all game. So get to the basket. Uh, well, it's too late now. Now you got to go for a three. Looking for the opportunity. Seven to play. Cunliffe for three. No good off the rim. Out of bounds to the Salukis, who are in good shape with three seconds to go. Todd Licklider wanted a foul as Cunliffe hit the deck. He didn't get it. Yeah, when it was 19.5, I think no KJ Riley just goes and sprints and goes directly to the basket and forces the ref to call a foul. If they call a charge, then so be it. But get to the basket, you score with 
12 seconds on the clock. He makes two free throws, and now it's a 12. It's a one-point ball game with 12 seconds, and you just keep extending the game. Um, knowing that they hadn't been shooting threes well this game, I was surprised to see them opt to try to go for the three. Well, Jones will go back to the line. He made two a moment ago, and this time he will have two. Super bonus, that is the 10th team foul on the Aces. I mean, this kid's taking over. He had the and one, he scored the other bucket. He just had two free throws. I don't want to say he scored. I would love to see the stats, but he, does he have almost all their points in overtime? Almost. 14, now 15 in the game. And the SIU chant starts here at the Ford Center. It's a sign of a good team. McGill goes out of the game, and you put in, and the freshman steps up into the point guard position and takes over. The Salukis survive a road test in Evansville, their sixth straight win in Missouri Valley play, their best mark, their best stretch since 2007. Wasn't always pretty, partner, but they got the job done. You know, in the conference play, whenever you can get a game on the road, you take it. It doesn't have to be pretty. At the end of the day, all you're looking for is the W. And for Evansville, steps in the right direction, just have not yet been able to find that win. Definitely steps in the right direction. They were struggling. They were getting beat bad, and the Coach Licklider has them playing well. For Marcus Wilson, I'm Kyle Peach. We say so long from the Ford Center in Evansville. SIU wins in overtime, 64-60 over Evansville. All games airing on the ESPN networks so are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Thanks for joining us. Extra basketball tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN.